I joined AMSAT. You want to know why? Stick with me and I'll share that with you. Let's jump into it. Welcome to this episode of Shack Talk. In this episode of Shack Talk, I want to talk about AMSAT, why I got my amateur radio license, and what this means to me, and maybe what it could mean to you also. So, for the longest time, I've wanted to be an amateur radio operator, and I'm talking like a half a century now. And so early on, the Morse code was always a problem for me. I, I am dyslexic, and learning those patterns was just very, very difficult. And I know later in years, they did away with the CW code portion, but I just, you know, got busy with life, kids, and everything else. But now I'm getting closer to retirement. I got my amateur license. And all this time, one of the things I've always still followed is AMSAT. Because as a child, especially back in the 60s during the space race in the 70s, it always fascinated me that amateurs could put a satellite in space. Now, I know today it's far more common for amateurs to put satellites in space. And when I speak of amateurs, I'm really talking about smaller commercial operations or the 16-year-old high school student from Switzerland, I believe, that put the LoRa satellite in orbit. So it's much more common now, but it still is fascinating as ever to me that this is taking place. And, and so this was, again, probably 50% of the reason which I've, I got my amateur radio license. So 50% dealing with satellite, probably 25% for the community, because one of the things that I do like about amateur radio is it has a very strong community and this community has lasted for a long long time so I really wanted to be part of that and the other 25 percent is really what can I do to advance the technology because I think you know and this is a personal opinion and I don't mean this is a negative personal opinion but I think you know some of the translation has been lost in amateur radio from back in the day till now because this was amateur radio uh, was really a learning platform for electronics uh, because I did get involved in quite a bit of electronics in my professional life over the past um, you know 50 years etc and I, I have done a lot with electronics and I think that's the one thing with, with cheap and easy kit you can go out buy a Baofeng for you know 35 bucks and you can do some crazy things you know but where's the invention and I think with satellite satellite brings back the ability to invent and to develop skills and understandings and create new technologies and innovations so this is what excites me about AMSAT now um, again, from personal opinion, I think AMSAT's got a few challenges, and I'll talk about those in a minute, but I still just, again, want to focus on why I joined it. So the first thing is, you know, if you want to play, you have to pay. You have to contribute to a community for that community to grow. And one of the things that, you know, I'm, you know, I have not seen over these years is the true support AMSAT um, needs to really get out of the community. Uh, it, it does not seem, and this is again a little bit of opinion, that, that a lot of hams are not members of AMSAT. And, and, and I find that a little bit sad in a way because there's so much to bring. Now, one of the big pieces I would like to see out of AMSAT, and, and I know, and I'll get into this, talking with some of their uh, fellows is, you know, basically a, a geostationary satellite, you know, over North America, for example. Um, you know, again, one of their fellows, and I'll talk about that gentleman in a minute, because I think this is a really cool story, uh, was sharing me that there's a European satellite uh, geostationary over Africa or something like that. However, I think it would be really fascinating to have a digital satellite in a geostationary orbit over the US or a couple over the world that could be linked so you could talk DMR you know voice and other means you know really too much bandwidth um, you know for an amateur satellite but again the digital traffic that a amateur satellite could carry would be fascinating and the cool thing is you might say okay you have you know Brandmeister you have P25 you have all these other digital protocols that use the internet yes they're out there however and, and technically at some point they probably do go through a satellite but the cool piece about having a satellite and you know our own amateur radio satellite is we are no longer bound by the terrestrial confines of the internet 
So again, you could talk directly from a ground link station to a satellite to another ground station somewhere across the country on a couple watts. And I, I think that would be fascinating and be able to transfer data and share weather information and all kinds of other data. Because one of the things that really fascinates me in my day job, I am involved highly with industrial IoT, with 5G, uh, you know. So again, I really see where a lot of this technology is going. And I think this is a fascinating spot for these guys to be part of. But they can't do this without membership. And so as you see here, I'm, I'm a member. I plopped down my 80 bucks. Now I bought a little bit of an extended membership at 80. I think they started at 40, 45, something like that. But I did get a free copy of this software, which I think was like 35 bucks. So at the end of the day, I thought that was pretty cool. So I got a magazine, certificate, um, uh, DVD. But, you know, the part is I'm now part of something bigger, which is fascinating. me. And this is what I really want to get into. So I went and took my license examination, my technician's license, uh, a couple months ago. And uh, oddly enough, this gentleman right here on the cover of this latest edition, uh, Keith Baker, was one of my volunteer examiners. And I struck up a conversation, and it was fascinating because he's one of the past presidents of AMSAT. And he really shared a deep look into what this organization does, how this organization works, etc. And it really fascinated me. And, and I think the one big challenge AMSAT has is probably coming forward a little bit in time but again i think one of the biggest challenges they have is funding as i understand from keith baker they have one full-time paid employee and that's basically uh, you know an administrative project management type person everybody else is volunteer and that's really cool in itself but things cost money to develop and, and the thing is they can make stuff go a long ways but again they need membership now apparently I am member 41,535. After all these years in what, I think there's something like 2.6 million licensed hams in the United States alone at this time. I, I seen that number somewhere on the internet. But again, you know, this is open worldwide. This is not just the United States. So, and I'm assuming that, you know, this is a sequential number. I'm just making a guess. So people have fallen off their silent keys, etc. But again, you know, supporting this organization, I think, is really critical because this is one of the pieces as more time opens up uh, for myself personally is I really want to volunteer for this organization. I really want to be part of this organization's mission because I think there's some really crazy good possibilities in this organization and, and again the outreach abilities i think for this are, are are great you know when you look at all the stem stuff that's going on in the school system and and really getting you know kids excited about technology and i think that's another big piece of amateur radio is getting kids excited about this and what is more exciting than a satellite i mean i was again with oscar one fascinated by it i would go to the library at that time way before the internet and pick up all all the arl um, you know you know uh, books and things like that dealing with oscar and i was just fascinated by it and actually that led me into a short career in microwave satellite communications and so, again, this is really exciting stuff for me. Now, I, one of the things I want to share in this space also is this over here. So, is, is I kind of pointed out when I kicked this channel off, I want to cover satellites, amateur radio, and electronics. And, and I don't want the satellites just to be amateur radio because... And again, if it's your thing, I'm not trying to knock this, but standing you know, outside, pointing an antenna at the sky, giving somebody my call, getting their call and saying, hey, I made a contact, is cool but you know how many times can you do that uh you know i mean where is the bigger fun in this i am fascinated again when i look back at what some of the um, uh, other folks have done for example like the 16 year old that put the LoRa satellite up there exchanging MQ, MQTT data and that kind of stuff. This is what I think is really cool geeky stuff that you know extends far beyond just making that contact. So uh, over here is my first one of my first projects in this space is I am building a satellite tracker. So I'm using and, and I'll go into this when, once I get this done. I'll go into greater detail and on my 
uh, DIY channel, I'll get into even greater detail on how all the parts are designed and everything. And I will also put all the parts out on Thingiverse and on, the, on my website. If you want to build it in the future, this will be open source. You can have it and have some fun with it too. But just uh, the basics of this is I'm using a couple geared steppers uh, with an Arduino and a CNC shield and drivers here to, to run this whole thing. And then I'm going to develop the software and integrate the software for the Arduino to drive this and point at satellites and then basically have a mounting pad for, you know, an antenna like an arrow, etc. So this thing can track satellites. Now, the one thing, again, as I mentioned early on, it would be really cool to see a higher power uh, geosynchronous satellite up there where you didn't need something like an arrow that you could use a more modest antenna that was not ha didn't have to be directionally pointed or could be permanently directionally pointed at the geostationary satellite much like your you know dish or direct TV antenna is that would be really cool but again with a lot of the new challenges as Keith Baker was saying you know you have to be able to put propulsion systems now in them uh, to deorbit them in 25 years if you want them to be in, in a geostationary position and all kinds of other stuff so again this takes funding to do this this is why I plop down my 80 bucks to support these people and I highly would encourage you to also do the same so, and again, I know people can contribute different amounts and they have different options. I chose the 80, maybe in the future, I'm, I'll choose the present, but I can tell you, as long as I'm an amateur radio operator and I'm basically upright and have the economic means, I will contribute to this organization to help them along to achieve these goals. Because again, I think this is a lot bigger than just myself as an amateur radio operator. And I really salute these guys for the contributions uh, that they've made because these, these, as I understand it, like are, uh, you know, all the recent past presidents, I guess even going back to the original, I'm, I'm not sure the whole thing, it kind of alludes to that in here, but this is exciting. These guys really gave of themselves to really make something of this. And I would really like to be, and I look forward to be part taking this to the next generation. So hopefully you found this interesting as to why I joined AMSAT, why I think AMSAT's important to, to the hobby, and, and what it can provide to the community outside of amateur radio as a whole. So if you did, hey, give it a big thumbs up. Be sure to share it with your friends. Don't forget, subscribe's over there. If you got some comments about your experiences with AMSAT, what you think, hit me up in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you guys. Well, we'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.